Thank God for all he's done. That was our youth choir. And uh, it's our turn to sing. We're going to be singing from our Green Hymn book, um, 181, Victory Ahead. And before we do that, we also want to appreciate uh, the orchestration by the choir, Be Still My Soul, Finlandia by Sibelius. And then they also had uh, a choir song, Great and mighty is our God, arranged by Mary Parks. Brother Shell Ido is going to be leading us. Three. A hymn book 353. Three. Revive us again. Amen. We, I'm sure we all believe God is ready to revive us again. Amen. And that's why we're here for revival. So we're yes. going to sing verses 1, 2, and 3. Verses 1, 2, and 3. We praise the Lord.
777, send the fire. Amen. We sing all the three verses after the introduction by the friends. 277. the fire fell. Amen. We sing verses 1, 2, and 3. Verses 1, 2, and 3. never forget yeah, when the Lord sanctified or saved or baptized and we believe today the fire will fail again today. Yeah. Song before prayer 488. 488. 488. It says bring your vessels not a few. Bring your vessels not a few. We're going to sing verses 1 and 2 sitting down and the last verse we sing standing after which we shall be led in prayer. At the chorus of the last verse, we sing a cappella, the choir, and the keyboard will join. Bring your vessels, not a few.
As we remain standing, we call upon Brother Lazarus Simbaniga to come and pray for us. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we want to thank you this morning. We can feel your presence. Yes. And for that, we are very grateful. Amen. Our hearts are assured this morning that whatever need we have, you are ready to bless. Yes. Therefore, the vessel you're going to use to deliver the teaching this morning, may your anointing fall upon them. Yes. Touch their lips, oh dear God, oh, that they may pronounce the word of God in fullness of power. Yes. The power to set the captives free. Yes the power to pronounce every blessing to our lives, and the power to live a victorious life. Yes. When we go down on our knees to pray, how much we pray that King of glory, you bless the altar service. Yes. Meet our every need there, yes. answer our every prayer, yes. for we pray in Jesus' name. Yes. Again, good morning to all of you for joining our service this morning, um, the first Bible teaching that we're going to have for this um, Camp 2022. May God bless you. Amen. We would like to also welcome our internet audience. May God bless you for joining us Amen. now or whenever you manage to join us. We pray that the blessings of the Lord will fall upon you at that time too. We are the Apostolic Faith Church, currently located at Caffin Lee Christian Center in uh, Newtown, and the postcode is SY164AJ. If you live close by, you can visit us, and a warm welcome will await you. We want to continue to encourage you to take time to pray. At the end of every service, make sure you take a good time to pray, and I believe God will bless you as you do so. Amen. Um, for our rota, uh, kitchen and dining, today we do have Manchester. Then in the evening, we're going to have uh, service at uh, 8 p.m., in case you did not, do not have the program or the schedule for this camp meeting, um, this is happening um, every day like that, but it's good to remind yourself by looking at the, pro at the program. Um, on Tuesday, uh, we'll have the early morning prayer meeting uh, between 5.30 and 6.30 a.m., and we'll also have Bible teaching at 10 a.m., and uh, we'll be having children's service at 3.30 p.m. Uh, just a note on that. I understand there was an expectation that children would do the welcome that they would normally do for a camp meeting, but this time around, come to their children's church. Amen. They will do everything there and want to support them. And because they won't remember the time, make sure all parents come with your children when it's time for children's church. On Wednesday, we're going to be having pastors, leaders, and their spouses meeting at, at three, sorry, that's my, my apologies for that. This is going to be happening at 3 p.m. today. We're going to be having pastors, leaders, and spouses meeting. And then uh, on Saturday, just a reminder, we'll have uh, ordinance and baptismal services. So if you have been saved from your life of sin and you want to be ba water baptized, please do register with our camp office. Also, we do have an event an invitation for, or a welcoming event for all those first-timers and international guests. That's going to be on Wednesday at uh, 12 noon. The venue is just behind this uh, sanctuary uh, here. We also have 
names for those going out for evangelism uh, on the camp notice board. So please do check uh, your name if it's there for the rota for going out on, uh, for this uh, evangelism. That will be on the camp notice board just by the uh, end, main entrance to this uh, campsite. We will continue our service with the first special uh, that's sent a great revival. It's a male sextet by B.B. McKinley. And then after that, we would like to have uh, two mini testimonies from as many as can testify. Uh, just make sure you say what God has done for you. Praise God for that. Uh, if you, two minutes is not very long to try to give every, say everything that happened. Um, after the two minute testimonies, we'll be having the second special, which is Lord Send a Revival Solo. Uh, that's going to be given by Sister Nombule Loshamba. It's, the song is written by Joe I. Parkins. God bless you. before you and 
was opportune to be born and raised in a Christian home. Actually, my dad was a pastor, but that didn't make me a Christian. Um, quite early, I got saved, but I was quite careless with it. And then I started living a false life, you know, moving in and out uh, with the people of God. But um, after I, a few years, God you know, spoke to me in a language that I understood. He told me I was heading to hell. And one morning, preparing for camp meeting in Lagos, um, Nigeria then, about Friday before the Sunday of camp meeting, God spoke to me and uh, I yielded my heart. Amen. God saved my soul on my Amen. bed. Uh, I went to the living room. The Lord sanctified me. Amen. That year after the camp meeting, I stayed back on the campground in my, in my parents' cabin, in the room right there. God filled me with the mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, evidence with the speaking of a tongue I never learned before. Since then, God has been you know, looking after me, taking care of me, ordering my steps. He gave me a, a nice family. And, you know, I, I praise God for, um, you know, the, my family serving the Lord with me. My children are here on the platform serving the Lord with me. You know, it's something that uh, my parents witnessed. They were on the same platform with me and my children are on the same platform. You know, serving the Lord. I praise the Lord. You know, he's been healing me. This past two, two years or over two years, we have gone through a lot. You know, health-wise, but the Lord is there. Yes. You know, he has healed me. Amen. He's still healing us. Amen. And he will, he will heal us. He will sort our problems. Amen. You know, just pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. way back in the 50s and my father was born in the gospel in the christian home Amen. and i too was also born in the christian home i thank god for that Amen. i too uh, can say like david that my lines are falling into prison places Amen. but after a few years in the wilderness uh, god had grace on my soul and i came back to the gospel and god saved my soul uh, the reason why i stood up today is i have two things that i need to thank god for i work as a frontline worker as a health worker so during the period of the COVID, uh, God spared my health. I never caught COVID during the whole period. I thank God for that. The other thing is, uh, for the last five years, there was an issue at my workplace where a complaint was made against me by my employer. So she reported me to the regulatory board that, reg that governs our, our, my profession. So I was subjected to a, what they call a fitness to practice. From one uh, medication error, they drew about nine allegations and my license was as good as gone from the look of things. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. I remember the day of the hearing, and my mom was praying for me, and she said she's going to pray the whole time of the, of the, of the hearing. Around 11, I told mom, this is going to last the whole day. You, get, you better stand up and, and end your prayer. And she said, I made a vow that I'm going to pray to the end of the, the whole process. It lasted until 5 o'clock, and the good news, this last Tuesday, this whole matter was put to closure. Amen. And I still have my license. I gave God the glory. Amen. I was once a sinner, but I came. I thank God for the goodness of the Lord to me. I saw the life of my mom. I said to God, if you can save my mom, you will help me. I saw the transformation in her life. You dare not cross the line of my mom when she's crossed. But I thank God. I came from a polygamous home. But God gave my mom that peace of mind. She became as meek as a dove. I said, Lord, if you can help her, you will help me. I went on the altar. I prayed the Lord saved my soul. He sanctified me and baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. I thank God that when I came, I saw all these beautiful faces, just the word of God we are hearing, the lovely songs. I saw young people like me. It's been 40 years now. Going to 40 years, I've come across this gospel. And this gospel has still got the same power that I've had since 1985. It has never changed. I thank God for the people of God. I thank God that I've been jobless and the Lord has provided for me. I've been sick. The Lord has healed me. I've been in crisis, real crisis. And I will look up, Lord, where will I go? And my Jesus never forgets me. My mom has gone to glory. I want to see her one day. Pray for me.
saving me. Amen. I thank God that um, I just finished studying um, a three-year engineering course, and half of my whole degree was in COVID, and that was very difficult because it's such a practical course. You can have that personal relationship with my lecturers, but God still helped and provided and made me pass with flying colors. Amen. I also want to thank God because I was struggling. Well, I was finding, I was trying to look for a graduate job, and God gave me my dream job, the one that I didn't even have before. Amen. Um, I need to continue to pray for me, and when it's all said and done, that I see his face. Amen. I'd like to thank God because my niece had a little girl, six pound four ounces, born seven week premature. So this is what I want to thank God for. Last week, my niece went home with her mum after being in the incubator for two weeks. So this is what we want to thank God for. I'm so thankful to the Lord for bringing us uh, from Ireland uh, to uh, this camp meeting uh, without any problem after the two years uh, pandemic break. Glory be to God. I want to thank God for saving a prodigal son like myself because I was born into the gospel, but I chose to go my own way. But uh, glory to be to God. Uh, God cornered me up and saved my soul. He sanctified me and baptized me with Holy Ghost and fire. Since then, God has been all and all for me. All those things that I thought I could not do, God started doing it for me. When I let God, he started taking care of every situation in my life. God got married for me in this gospel, gave me a God-loving and God-fearing woman and a beautiful children serving the Lord with me in this gospel. I want to thank God because uh, in the, uh, during the beginning of this year, I had a head scared. I was so scared and that uh, the fear got over me, but we prayed to God and God, you know, saved me. Amen. Glory be to God. I want to thank God because our first daughter studied in Ukraine. And uh, she came down for the Christmas break in December. And we were talking with her, and she said, oh, they said there's going to be war, there's going to be problems. And uh, we started praying. But the week that she's supposed to go back to uh, Ukraine, that was when the war broke out. Uh, we thank God that uh, God saved her. Please, children of God, uh, continue to pray for me and my family. That job that the Lord has given to us in Ireland, we want God to expand it. Please continue to pray for us that at the end of everything, we and our brethren there will say the Lord. Amen. They will give us their testimonies. And then after that, we have this special song. I want to give God the glory and all honor and adoration this morning. I actually, I wasn't going to try, um, testify, but God kept on reminding me how he kept me as someone working in an, in an intensive care during COVID. It was very bad, but God kept me. I caught COVID, breathing was difficult, but right there on my bed, God healed me. Um, didn't have to go to the hospital. I want to give God the glory because he has been very good. In, uh, he saved my soul. He brought me here. I was, my father was a Muslim. Thank God for my mom who was taking us to Anglican church when we were little. And God spoke to my heart. When I came to England, things were a bit difficult. But God led me to Apostolic Faith Church. There, God sa saved my soul. He sanctified me and baptized me with Holy Ghost and fire. Ever since God has been God, I mean God, he has supplied all our needs according to his riches in glory. He had seen my children through school. He has helped us in every way you can ever think of. There is no way I can ever pay back what God has done for me. And I'm telling you, children, God is good. God is good all the time. He will give you even more than what you require. Just rely on him totally, and he will supply all your needs. He will be with you. I thank God for my family. They've been very supportive, my husband and my children. I give God all the glory. Pray, pray with me. Amen. 
35 years ago, my mother brought me into, into the gospel. I was just a little boy. But now I'm an old, I'm, I'm grown now. I thank God so much because I have a very wonderful salvation story. When I was just nine, I, they preached about salvation and they preached about hell, heaven and hell. So I went to my mom one day and told her, Mom, where will I go? She said, well, if you are not saved, you will go to hell. But I don't want you to go to hell. So I was sober. I said, I was talking to myself, am I going to go to hell or heaven? I tried to practice what the, the salvation, because when I see people crying on the altar that they are, they are saved, I will look at them and try to form, try to cry, but that cannot give you salvation. Salvation is experiential. So I, on my own, I was talking, I was just telling God, please save my soul. But this heaven, I want to see heaven. Can you show me heaven? In a vision, God showed me heaven. I saw all the beautiful mansions, and, and Jesus took me and told me that this is where you will be if you are saved. And I opened my heart to God, and I was just crying. The cry I, I was trying to form, I was crying, I was weeping. When I was weeping, Jesus said, I've saved your soul. Amen. He sanctified me and filled me with the Holy Spirit. Amen. He has been doing wonderful things to me. He has blessed me with a wonderful family. And he has brought me to the camp, to UK camp. This is my first time I've come here. And I'm so happy to be among God's children. God bless you all.
Let's open our Bibles to the book of Joel, Joel chapter 2, read from verse 12. Joel chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore, also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. And rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. For who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering a drink, and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, Call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast, and let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber, and the bride out of a closet. 17. Let the priest and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy not thine heritage to reproach that the heathens should rule over them wherefore should the, they say among the people where is their God well this is uh, the prophecy uh, of Joel one of the minor prophets and it is in this prophecy that he God made him to see what was going to happen on the great day of Pentecost and beyond to our time in 1906. Here we find God telling us there was a need to tend to God because people had moved away from God. Whenever that happens, God demands that we, we, we come back to him because God loves us. Yes. He is love. He has always wanted Israel to be following them from the beginning. But every now and then, they would just disobey God. And God was not pleased with that. God is never pleased with a time when people are far away from him. And that is the reason why, by the grace of God, when we started the beginning of this year, the first Sunday, we looked at the sermon, which is the theme of our camp meeting, Revive Us Again. And the scriptures that we read 
We're from uh, Psalm 85, verse 6 and 7. Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us mercy, O Lord, Amen. and grant us thy salvation. Amen. Well, the psalmist was asking a question here. God will always revive his people. But there is a need that people tend to God. And when we do so, he is more than ready. We are his creation, created in his image. He loves us so much that he doesn't want at any one point in time that we live without him. We have to have God in our hearts. And I believe God will help us Amen. to understand that in as much as David was crying out to say, will thou not revive us again? God is ready to meet us whenever we come to him with all our heart, with all our minds. The situation that we read about in the book of Joel, you'll find it touches all people. Joel referred to the young ones suckling their mom's breasts and he referred to everybody in the congregation the whole congregation assemble the elders gather the children everybody come and god will do you good as we are we have come from many parts of the world many parts of the uk for this gathering that god himself prepared for us I was thinking, we have said a lot about what happened in the last two years. Remember on the 18th of March, when uh, I was on my desk, because I was uh, working for um, Birmingham as a consultant then, before I joined them formally. Um, it was like, People had just started not coming to work. And one of the guys I worked with came to me. I was sitting on my desk because I'm, 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 I, I'm a consultant. I'm supposed to be at work all the time. They, they could leave earlier than me, but I couldn't justify not coming to work. Now, when he said to me, Mark, this is the time that we have to go home. Then the prime minister has just announced the then Prime Minister Boris Johnson it just announced that we should be leaving. People should stay at home. This thing struck hard on us. I left the office that day thinking probably it's going to be a couple of days. And you tell your subordinates that it's going to be just a few days before you come back. And a couple of days became a few months. A few months became half a year, before you know it, we're beyond half a year, and it continued. God shut down the whole world. The great cities that are uh, sort of like in boom and bust all the time, with a lot of noise, they came to a halt. I, I said to myself, when I was walking up one time, I thought I'm in a war zone because you're walking by yourself, everybody's in their houses, it's all quiet. God is God, yes. and He proved Himself beyond doubt that a thing called a virus can put the world to a standstill. With all the sophistication and advancement in technology, everything came to a halt. Now, God did it with a virus. He can do it with any other means. We see how great God is. We see how much he can do. What, whatever he wants, we are subjects to his will. But what, what we want to uh, understand is 
God did this for a purpose. And here we are in 2022, July, gathered at this campground. We couldn't gather in 2020. We, are, we anticipated to. Most of us had refunds for having paid our camp fees then. Twenty twenty one, we anticipated it did not happen. This God is a great God. When He decides what He decides, He does it. But what we should also know is He is a merciful God. The fact that we have come around this year. It's not a justification that we could be here next year. No. So let's make the most of what God has given us. Amen. I don't want to say that, but it could be our last camp meeting. Yeah. Who knows when Christ comes? Yeah. So let, let's look at it that way. And when there is a call to say, let's be revived, let's come to God, let's check our ways, Amen. it's simply... God's mercy yeah. extended to us. Yeah. That if by any means any one of us is yet to know this God, he is here. Yes. Yeah. You, 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 you can leave this place changed. Amen. So we want to make the most of this come meeting because God has gathered us around for that reason. Amen. Now, when we talk of revival, it is important for us to understand that revival depends on God alone. And what I mean by that is we, we, we cannot wake up a revival. The fact that we are gathered here calling uh, this camp meeting revivers again, it, it doesn't mean that we will in any way make God to do what he doesn't want to do. It is our plea to him. It is our prayer to him that by any means he will have mercy on us and revive us again. That's why the psalmist said, will you not do it, God? Will you not revive us again? That thy people may rejoice in thee for revival brings joy. It brings peace. So, it is God that decides when, where, and how it can happen. However, we have the assurance that when we respond to God's call at any time, in sincerity and honesty of heart, he will hear us. Yes. What he wants us to do, we see in uh, Hosea chapter 10, verse 12, say, sow to yourselves in righteousness. So we have works of righteousness to do. We sow to, to, to to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. That's what he says. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. So, it is for you and me to seek the face of God. Yes. And when we do that, God will visit us. Yes. Uh, the breaking up of fallow ground. I know how to use a plow ox-driven plow. I know how to drive a tractor, breaking the ground, farming. When you are breaking dry ground, it, it's an effort. It takes a lot of energy to do that. It's work. And as you're breaking dry ground, at times, you meet up with roots within the soil. 
that can shake you, that need to be moved away. So, grass that is well embedded into the soil, that needs to be moved about. I, I think most of us have seen this happening in some farm place somewhere. It is hard work. You have to break the ground, which means it will be hard, it is difficult, there is work to do when we come to God. We prepare ourselves. Yeah. And when, when we do that, we, for farmers, when they've broken the ground, they take the seeds, cast them into the ground, then wait for God to send the rain. Yeah. But if they did not break the, fallow, the ground, they, they will not blame God when it rains and they don't have any harvest. True. So there is work to be done yeah. for God to revive us again. Amen. Now, in the past, um, I've got uh, one of our tracks. It's, uh, on, it's titled Sound Doctrine. And on it, it talks about the fact that over years, people try to muddle up the word of God and think that by advancement, the word of God changes. We heard that yesterday, that Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't change. So the word of God is settled in heaven. David said, forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. It doesn't change. Now, we know the great Pentecost revival that happened. As uh, proclaimed by Joel, he focused at that. In verse 23 of Joel chapter 2, he said, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord Amen. your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause you to come down for you the rain, for the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Glory be to God. We, we know that according to this prophecy, when the Pentecost fire fell down, uh, it, it, it was in the first month according to Israel's time. And we also know that, according to Israel's calendar, when the 1906 revival occurred, it happened in April also, which is the first month, Abib, according to the calendar of Israel. So God fulfilled this prophecy in 1906. When people prayed, it was also fulfilled on the great day of Pentecost when people prayed. We know that. Jesus had said to his disciples, tarry ye yeah. in Jerusalem yeah. until ye be endured with power from on high. Yeah. And God sent the fire down yeah. when they were in one accord. That, that's one thing that we need to know, that for us to be revived, corporate revival that we heard of yesterday, we need to be united. Yes. One with Christ as individuals, we become one with him corporately. And God will bless us Amen. when we do that. So uh, this tract talks about the, the revival that occurred in the early church. And then there was a period of dark ages. And then at the end of the dark ages, we have Martin Luther being raised up by God to preach that the just shall live by faith. And in that great reformation, there was a great revival that swept through Europe. And that reformation, it actually launched the religious liberty that we know of in our time. And then after that, we had about 200 years of time. John Wesley came up to be used of God to restore the doctrine of sanctification. And when he preached that, uh, that there is entire sanctification, which is the second work of grace, 
preaching Christian perfection in this land. I want to thank God that Christian perfection, though God used John Wesley, it is a Bible doctrine. There was a great revival in this country. And we thank God that beyond that great revival of the time of John Wesley, we have this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit that started with the revival here in Wales in 1904 and swept across the Atlantic to the people, a humble people that were praying in Azusa Street in Los Angeles in America. And when they were praying, these people just decided to separate themselves. They were sanctified, holy people, crying out to God to send the fire down. Yeah. And on the 10th day, from the day they started, the, the Spirit of God fell down. Amen. And there was a great revival. That did not only happen in Los Angeles, but it, the fire spread out the whole world. And that's where our church started, 1906. Florence Crawford, the founder of our work, was also there. And she prayed to a Christian experience of sanctification, and she received the Holy Ghost and fire. Now, we thank God for the revival then. But God is still God. And he hasn't changed. He is still looking up to you and me to pray. You will find that for a true revival to occur, I mean, a revival it is nothing less than a revolution. That's what uh, Andrew Murray says. It is a casting out of the spirit of worldliness, selfishness, and making God and his love triumph in the heart and life. So we cast away desire for worldliness. We, we desire more of God. We consecrate. We give our lives over to God. And you know what? As we do that, God will send the fire down. Yeah. Ours is just to separate ourselves, and God is more than ready to help us. Yeah. We find in Isaiah 50, 57, verse 15, For thus saith the high and lofty one yeah. that inhabiteth in eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the, whole, in the high and holy place with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit. Amen. To revive the spirit of the humble. Yeah. To revive the heart of the contrite ones. Amen. Now, th there are words to take note of in that verse. God is holy. Yes. But the mystery is God can live in our hearts, yes. when we allow him to. Yes. That, that's a mystery. Yeah. And we thank God that we can understand it by experience. Yeah. We had one brother testifying that salvation is, is an experience. You have to experience it to know it. Yes. And we thank God that uh, God uh, desires to dwell with those who are of a contrite, humble spirit. Humility makes us to be closer to God. And he can re revive the spirit of the humble. Uh, but the pride, he, he doesn't want them. May God take away any form of pride from us. Amen. He wants to revive us, but he demands that we be humble to him. Now, if we go to uh, Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. We want to do that. Yes. We want to wait. As, we, as I said earlier on, we don't work it up. 
We wait, we tarry, we pray. And when we do that, God will remember us. You'll find that lamentations is uh, generally is the anguishing of Jeremiah when he was pouring out his heart to God, crying out for the degradation of a once great nation of Israel. And it was written after the destruction of the city of Jerusalem, that's approximately 586 B.C. And Jerusalem was under siege for about 18 months before it was finally taken over. So Jeremiah was physically, emotionally, and spiritually broken that God will restore Israel. You know, if we seek for this revival, if we look at our, the, the, the state of our nation, the way the world is in our time, we would cry out to God that God will send his revival. Amen. For Jeremiah cried out that God will restore them, and God answered those prayers. You know, um, what Jeremiah was crying about, the moral and spiritual decline of Israel, uh, our world is in, not in any way better. If anything, it is close to us, even our churches. We, we need to pray to God that the church of our time be revived. Yeah. That we, 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 God restores the love for the truth, for the sound doctrine, yes. for the word of God that changes us. Yeah. I read somewhere where someone was saying, we, we, we need the gospel that John Wesley had. We need the gospel that Martin Luther had. We need the gospel that the likes of George Whitefield, the, those great men of God, that they had in our time. Yes. If we hear that gospel, I believe God will make a breed in our time similar to them. Uh, there, there is a lot of lukewarmness in our time. Uh, decline to pray, give our lives to God, but I believe God will help us. Yes. Uh, he will take away the lack of commitment to services, decline in attendance to evening services, weekly church activities. God will help us. Amen. And I believe when he sends the fire in us, uh, you know, when you are on fire for God, you just want to go out yeah. and do great things for him. Yeah. We know what the Samaritan woman did after she met Christ. Uh, the great uh, revival of Samaria uh, came about because she went out. She had received the living water, left the well of Jacob, and the whole city came back, and they confirmed that we do not believe because of what you say, but we have heard him. They heard Christ being, uh, preaching to them and telling them of the kingdom of God. I believe God will help us. He will give us that fire. What, uh, for, for people to experience a revival. We have uh, what, a revival series um, that we went through some time, and uh, I'll quote it. It says, for the people who experience revival will be an obedient people. Yeah. Secondly, the people who get revival will be a humble people. Yeah. Thirdly, before a biblical Pentecost, there must be a praying people, yeah. a people waiting on God. Yeah. Just as no man takes a running jump in a leap and lands on the top of the Rockies, but gets there by patient toil, so it is with prayer. So we, we pray patiently. It may take time. If someone receives what they've been praying for, maybe for weeks today, your, 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 your blessing may come tomorrow. Yes. But all you have to do is to tarry. Even Roberts told those that came to one of their meetings uh, one evening that they should go out and do the three things. Confess any known sin. Immediately put away any doubtful habits and restore any broken relationships. And when they did that, they came back in a space of about an hour and even Roberts was praying that's when he prayed the famous statement that God 
bend me. And when God did bend him, God sent down a revival. And that prayer meeting, which was supposed to be a couple of hours, they continued praying until the next morning. And it got to be known that there was a people praying and the fire started spreading. Here in Wales, more than 100,000 people were saved in a short space of time. God demands that we have a sense of agency for us to have this revival. And God demands that we search our hearts for us to have our revival. Take away anything that hinders revival. In Lamentations 3.40 it says, Let us search and try our ways. Turn again unto the Lord. Uh, it says, If in Jeremiah, And ye shall seek me and find me. If ye shall search me. With all your heart. May, may God give us that sense of agency. Amen. To say today is the day that we want God to help us. Amen. When I, I said earlier on, in uh, unity brings revival. And uh, for the great Pentecost, they were in one accord, in one place, for the fire of God to come down upon them. And I believe that today. Amen. Today. Amen. If we're going to have a people that are dedicated to praying, a people that are dedicated to, because the word of God says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yes. So when we pray earnestly, fervently, God will remember us. Amen. May God increase that fervency in me. Amen. May God increase that fervency in you. Amen. And I know that when we do that, as Elijah prayed on Mount Carmel, and the fire fell down, God will send the fire down today, and he will consume the sacrifices of our hearts that we offer to him. He demands that we sow to yourselves in righteousness, for we will reap in mercy. We'll break up the fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he reign, uh, till he come and reign righteousness upon us. I'll finish with Psalm 85, verses 4 through to 7. It says, Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Will thou be angry with us forever? Will thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy. Amen. O Lord, grant us thy salvation. Amen. God is more than ready. Yes. God is here. Yes. And that to bless us. Yes. We'll sing the closing song, and the altars are open for us to come and pray. We want to seek the face of God. We want to pray and God will bless us.
God in heaven, how thankful we are that we can approach the throne of grace just now. We're thankful, Lord, for the wonderful words of life, for the sound doctrine that we have heard once more today. We pray, Lord, that you will hear our cry as we expose ourselves to you, Lord, that you will search out our hearts. Hear from heaven every determined soul, Lord. We know you'll answer prayer according to your perfect will, and we give you thanks for it, for we do come in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.